Tēnā koutou Ngāti Whātua. Ki ora koutou katoa e ro runga terama tēnā koutou katoa. Good afternoon everyone, Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us for this very important start to uh, the conference uh, and for an opening address. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce, my honour, to introduce uh, our opening speaker, the Right Honourable Dame Shan Elias, Dame Grand Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit, Chief Justice of New Zealand and the Administrator of the New Zealand Government. And she will uh, formally address uh, the 14th Australasian Conference on Child Abuse and Neglect. Please welcome Dame Elias. Ena mana ena reo, ena na na iwi o te moto e hui hui nei. Tene aku mihi mahana kia koto. Te manuhiri tuarangi, te manuhiri wai wai tapu. No mai haere mai ki Aotearoa. Norera kena toto, kena to, kena toto, kiora tato katoa. Nati fato a ke ora ke tena koto, tena koto e fokoto mai nei i amato. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, warm greetings to you all. I want to extend a special welcome to international delegates, especially those of you who are in New Zealand for the first time. This is, as you know, the 14th Australasian Conference on Child Abuse and Neglect. And it's nearly 10 years since New Zealand had the privilege of hosting it. So this is precious opportunity and we're very grateful to all of you who have travelled from afar to be here. The reception to open the conference is being hosted in the spirit of cross-agency cooperation, which is a theme of the co conference, by the Aust Australian Institute of Criminology and the Ministry of Social Development, that's of New Zealand, and I wanted to express thanks on behalf of us all to them. And I want especially to acknowledge the conference chairs, Dr. Adam Thomason and Paul Nixon, who have put huge effort into what promises to be a very stimulating conference indeed, with great speakers and important topics. I greet also the keynote speakers and the distinguished guests who will contribute greatly, I know, to the success of the conference, but so too will all of you delegates, because a conference such as this is an exchange, and you are all critical to the exchanges that matter. So I greet you all. Tēnā koto katoa. His Excellency the Governor-General, as you've heard, sends his apologies because he's in S Singapore representing New Zealand at the funeral of Lee Kuan Yew. But he's particularly sorry not to be here with you because the field in which you work is one in which he takes a special interest. His Excellency's loss, however, is my gain. I'm delighted to be able to stand in for him because the topic of this conference is one of considerable professional as well as personal interest to me. It's impossible to work, as I do, in the, within the justice system of any country and not be keenly aware of the impact of child abuse and neglect and the vicious cycle of intergenerational harm and alienation it sets up. The well-being and safety of children in our communities is a barometer of social justice and decency in any society. The way a society treats its children reveals, as Nelson Mandela put it, reveals its soul. To our very great shame, this window on our soul as a society is deeply disturbing. And when something is deeply disturbing, it's tempting to turn away if you can. So you who work to address child abuse and neglect are the people who do not flinch from what is revealed. And you know that none of us can afford to turn away from the issues of child abuse and neglect. And it's a very great pleasure for me to have the opportunity to express appreciation for the important work you do and to say, how much I admire your professionalism and your commitment to continuous adaptation in response to developing knowledge 
and insights into what works and what does not. That preparedness to learn and adapt is the reason for a conference such as this. It brings together different professional disciplines and different agencies working in the field. It builds upon the insight that the only sure ways to promote the safety and well-being of children is through promoting their better integration into the layered and diverse communities to which they belong. It's also critical to do as we would be done by, to recognise that these children have their own inherent dignity and perspectives rather than seeing them and their families as objects for agency management. Good intentions are not enough in seeking to address child abuse and neglect. Aspirations need to be backed up both by good design for agency and other responses and by practical strategies for engagement. But neither is sufficient in itself. Engagement without sound design and coordination is a mess and it's potentially harmful. And good theoretical system, uh, 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 the design of a system without strategies for practical implementation may be useless. For example, the principal judge of the youth court in New Zealand has pointed out that the family group conference in his court typically involves a young Māori boy and his mother. That's not the engagement hoped for in the system as designed. So even where system design may be good, practical effort is required to make it work. The causes of child abuse and ne neglect are complex. Effective strategies, both for prevention and to address the effects of abuse and neglect, must operate on a wide front. Cooperation between agencies with specific functions touching on child abuse and neglect and its consequences is essential. So too is coordinated effort by those professionals whose skills deal with different aspects of the problem and response. Nor is integrated and coordinated professional response sufficient in itself, however. Responses which fit the communities to which children belong and in which they are entitled to participate require strategies which are culturally appropriate. That means letting in the community. Now that's a far cry from the 1970s when I used to appear in the magistrate's court in child neglect cases. No one doubts or doubted then the sincerity of the views of the social workers of the time or that they were acting in what they conceived to be the best interests of the children. But the process was top-down and paternalistic. It was often culturally inappropriate and often hugely disruptive of family relationships. The human rights lens now applied to childcare the changes that we've made to put the child at the center and not simply as an object for agency benevolence, and the willingness to accept community diversity have all effected a real revolution in approach since those days. That we have come a long way does not mean that we should be complacent. Continuous reassessment in this area, as in all areas that matter, and are concerned with human interaction is the obligation of all who work in this field. Because children are our future, we need to invest in their health, well-being, development and safety. If strategies are to be responsive to the dignity of the child, we need to pay close attention to the identity of the child. That means the cultural ident identification and heritage of the child is as important as, as its health, education, and other aspects of its safety. So too are the child's family, and we need to pay close attention to the perspective of the child itself. The first principle of the child's best interests as paramount has now been reaffirmed in New Zealand in the Vulnerable Children Act of 2014. 
if we are to respect the, the human dignity of the child, the child must not, however, be treated as an object. And it's critical that those who respond to vulnerable children hear the child's voice and respect the child's wishes to the greatest extent. It's also important to see childhood as important in its own right. It's not simply a preparation for adulthood. Children must have safety to learn and grow and have fun. Families are where children are best nurtured and taught about the values that will equip them for life. But families can be dangerous for vulnerable children if the family is not coping and not equipped with the life skills and resources to protect and nurture the child. Engaging the families of vulnerable children is essential to best outcomes for them. Those who would grow children safely must ensure their families also grow in well-being and life skills. And for those families unable to care safely for their children, we need to ensure that there are properly supported foster caregivers and whānau caregivers to pick things up. These are very special people indeed, and the role they play in providing safe havens in which children can grow in self-esteem is often under the radar for most in our society. It's very hard work, and what is provided every day to improve the lives of children in our communities is humbling indeed. The organisers of this conference have taken the opportunity to ensure that within the theme, there is space to look especially at New Zealand experience with working with Tangata Whenua. The unique place of Tangata Whenua, their language, history, culture and traditions, shapes the identity of New Zealand. An indigenous response to promotion of the well-being of children it emphasizes whakapapa for connections, shared responsibility for child rearing, and cultural identity. Adherence to the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples gives added impetus to the need to respond appropriately when children are of Indigenous communities. Under the spirit in New Zealand of the Treaty of Waitangi, Interventions must foster protection, including of customs and language, the mutual good faith and cooperation that is a feature of partnership and full participation. But those principles are best strategy more generally. Excellent communication and respect for different experiences and, and perspectives are essential in mobilising the joint effort and responsibilities that are the only safe harbour for vulnerable children. The effort can be successful only if it builds on relationships. Such relationships set up partnerships across generations, across cultures, across disciplines, and across all agencies dedicated to nurturing and protecting children. So cultural responsiveness in a multi-agency world, the theme of this conference, matters. The complexities of child abuse and neglect mean that support and administration is, de is delivered in the modern administrative state by a wide range of agencies and providers as the content of the sessions of this conference properly acknowledges. Such agencies operate under the umbrella of human rights, in, including, importantly in this context, the Convention on the Rights of the Child. They also operate under open and fair processes which our communities now rightly expect because such openness and fairness are aspects of human rights in themselves. The conference offers the opportunity over the next four days to promote exchange of ideas and knowledge. The program seeks to stimulate new thinking on matters such as how more effective partnerships are built with indigenous peoples and those of different cultures to work out how best children may be kept safe and their well-being promoted. 
It also seeks to stimulate ideas about how different agencies, government and non-government, business and not-for-profit, can work better together in partnership to improve the lives of the most vulnerable in our communities. There is opportunity in the conference to show what is happening with child protection service in a range of jurisdictions so that outcomes for vulnerable children and young people are improved. At this conference, there is opportunity to share the body of evidence-based knowledge and understanding about what keeps children safe, and an opportunity to examine it from a range of different perspectives. A conference like this promotes connections and friendships that can be tapped for longer distance continued self-examination of best practice. I know that many of you have a lifetime of service in this important work. I know you will be energised by the conference to continue and, I, 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 and will, I'm sure, find real help here. I want to thank all of you for coming to Auckland to share your knowledge, ideas and expertise. And more importantly, I'm very glad indeed to have the opportunity to thank you for the essential work you all do. I wish you well for your deliberations and for a most successful conference. Norera, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā rā tātou katoa. Thank you.